Okay, this is for Astronomy 320. This is going to be a short one, but I just want to start getting on schedule and getting these posted and not having hour-long ones, maybe shorter 15-20 minute ones. So, I'm looking at the textbook. Uh, this is section 3.1, the laws of planetary motion, and they're going over a lot of stuff we've already gone over. So we talked about Tycho Brahe already. You already had a quiz on him. We talked about Kepler. We talked about his uh, three laws of planetary motion. So we've covered all this, okay? So I'm going to say we've covered all this. And so if you take a look at the, the next one, that's Newton's laws of motion. Okay, so... So here's Newton's laws of motion. Basically, there's Newton. We talked about all this. There's just three laws. So we've gone over all this. So we're actually deep into chapter three, to be honest with you. Okay, so then, but now we get into this. This is new. The book starts talking about mass, volume, and density. Okay, so I'll have an online thing for you, um, hopefully up tomorrow, and maybe a completed one by Thursday. By the way, if you download this PowerPoint, this is not the finished product. So if you downloaded this one, then you want to re-download it after the next video, and if there's three videos for this chapter, it probably won't be, just one more video after this one. But th this one will not be the complete PowerPoint you'll want to upload or download the um, next version. But anyway, mass, we talk about mass. Mass is a property of the body. It depends on the amount of stuff packed into a volume, okay? A bowling ball and a basketball have close to the same volume, but the bowling ball has way more stuff packed into it, into its volume, therefore it has a much greater mass than a basketball. You can think of two cubes. One cube is lead, the other one is styrofoam. Okay, you know that if there's equal volume, equal size, the one that's the lead is going to be a lot harder to move around than the one that's the styrofoam. More mass means something we call inertia. Okay, so what is inertia? Um, inertia, objects at rest want to stay at rest. Objects in motion with a constant velocity want to stay in motion with a constant velocity. If that sounds familiar, that's Newton's first law, basically, worded slightly differently. So, Newton's fir first law is also called the law of inertia. And things just basically want to keep doing what they're already doing. Inertia represents an object's ability to uh, resist, resist any attempts to change its motion. So, in other words, again, going back to bowling ball, basketball, same size about, but the bowling ball has way more mass, way more inertia. It's harder to get the bowling ball in motion if they're both at rest. You've got a b bowling ball and a basketball. You've got to get one of them in motion where you're going to pick the basketball. And then if a bowling ball and a basketball are rolling at you, okay, you got to stop one of them. Well, the bowling ball has more inertia. It's going to be harder to stop. It has a greater ability to resist your attempt to change what it's doing. All right, so you're going to try to stop the basketball. Basketball has less mass, less inertia, much easier to change what the basketball is doing. Okay, and then here's an example. This coin right here has inertia. It wants to stay right there. If you pull the card out fast enough, so the frictional force never gets large enough to move the coin with it, boom, the coin will fall right down into the water. Okay, and the same thing happens like when you're driving along and, and um, you hit the brakes and things slide uh, forward because it, everything wanted to keep going in the same glossy forward you were, or you're uh, at a stop and you push on the brakes, or, or you're at a stop and you floor it and everything goes back, or everything wanted to say stop where they were. Okay, so same thing happens with inertia. It's all kind of the idea of inertia. The greater the mass, the greater the inertia. The bowling ball has a greater mass and therefore a greater inertia than the basketball. It is harder to get the resting bowling ball to move and harder to get the moving bowling ball to stop. So you got this bowling ball to basketball is going to roll it down this ramp here. I don't know who this guy is here, but hopefully he's like, if, any, if either one of these hit him, it'll hopefully be the basketball. Bowling ball might hurt him a little bit, break his collarbone. Okay, so bowling ball versus basketball. Okay, this is the Eureka video on inertia. So he's about, they're only about, what are they, three minutes long, four minutes long, something like that. So um, I'm not going to play him here because i got to reserve my time here, but i got them all kind of set up here. So here's the first one. This one's on. They're, they're, they're sort of made for kids, I guess, but they're just telling you what's going on. Yeah, let's, let's move on. And we're not, we're not going to cover any of those. Here's, we want to get to the main part. So basically, they're trying to explain to you the idea of inertia. Okay, so that's that one. 
This one here, oh, we haven't gotten there yet. Let's go back to PowerPoint. Um, so you also have this one. That's, there's the link to it right there. You just click right there. That should take you right to it. And that one should be this one here. Okay, so this one's on maps. So he's throwing styrofoam around. At the end, he's going to try to catch a styrofoam in the... Uh, it's not set up to go here yet. But anyway, so that's that one. And then, so there's two videos you can watch. They're only about five minutes each, four minutes each, something like that. Okay, now mass versus weight. Those are two different things. A mass is a property of your body. Wherever you go in the universe, you have the same mass. If you want to gain mass or lose mass, okay, then you got to basically change your body. If you want to lose mass, then you got to start eating uh, celery and, and whatever, low-fat stuff and then go for long, long, long walks and jog and stuff, then you can lose mass. If you want to gain mass, you can sit in front of the TV all day eating eating hamburgers and drinking milkshakes or whatever, then you can gain mass. Mass depends on how much stuff is packed into your volume. Weight is a force. On Earth, it is the force with, with, with which the Earth pulls you down pulls down on you. So you get on your bathroom scale in the morning, you look at it and say, oh, I weigh 120 pounds. Well, pounds, they, that's a force. That's your weight. That's the force with which the earth is pulling down on you, and that's what the scale is measuring. Weight is, proportion, is proportional to mass. I should say proportional to mass, but also depends on the gravitational force in the location. So over here, so you're standing on the earth. Your weight could be, well, these are newtons. Newtons and pounds are, you convert back and forth. They're both units of force, okay? So you might have a, a weight of three, 560 newtons on earth, you go to the moon, which has a much smaller gravitational force, you're down to 90 newtons, okay? But the whole time, your mass stayed 56 kilograms because your mass did not change when you went from the Earth to the moon. Oops. Okay, then here's another Eureka video. That's the last one. It's about 4 minutes and 46 seconds. Give you something to do. It's uh, this one right here. It's taking so long to load. So here it is. It's uh, mass versus weight. If we hang the apple on it, so, we see that the earth so it gives you some idea down, of what we're talking about here. Newton. And again, if we were in a classroom, I could probably show these to you. But uh, I'm uploading these on YouTube, so I don't want this to take forever to upload because my computer basically, I can't use the internet when I'm uploading. So we want to be people like this. Uh, not that. Okay, volume is the other thing they talk about. It's the amount of space that an object or substance occupies. So people talk about the volume of water or, or, or things like that. It's the amount of three-dimensional space that an object occupies. And then you got, I just put these on there for decoration. You don't have to learn those equations. Now density, we talked about mass and then we talked about volume. Density is the ratio of mass to volume that mass is packed into, okay? The more mass is packed into the much more mass is packed into the volume of a lead cube, for example, than packed into a styrofoam cube of the same density. And density is equal to mass divided by volume. And then here you just got the same volume, and you got a gas which isn't very dense. You got a liquid, and then you got a solid. Now, actually, with water, it's the opposite. Liquid water is actually a little bit more dense than than, than solid water or ice, and that's why ice floats in in water. Okay, so, but, but for other, everything else, this is basically the way it goes. More stuff packed into a volume, the greater the density is going to be. And then your book has some densities here. These would be in grams per centimeter cubed. If you, a sugar cube is about a centimeter cubed in volume and, and has a mass of about one gram. So if you think, think of a sugar cube would be one, that's the same as water. Okay, if you can imagine one having a, a sample of water takes up a volume equal to a sugar cube that would be about it so you can see that insulating foam I guess that's like styrofoam or something like that 0 0.1 grams per centimeter cube wood is about 0 0.8 water is about 1 rock is about 2.5 earth is 5.5 okay you say well rock is only 2.5 earth is 5.5 well because we've got that incredibly dense iron core that's way up there in density. 
iron, 7.9, lead, 11.3, then gold is 19.3. So ninth, gold actually would have a greater mass per volume than lead. You pick, people pick up lead all the time. People don't pick up that much gold all the time. This is the last slide, I believe. Conservation of angular momentum. Okay, this will, well, this will come important. Uh, well, it's more important for the solar system than it is for the for the stars. It is somewhat important for the stars, but what we'll run into it is star formation. Because you have this cloud, the cloud is shrinking down. As it shrinks, it spins faster and faster because of this thing called conservation of angular momentum. So you can think of, for example, this, the figure skater. Okay, she has her arms out and she's spinning but not that fast, okay? Then when she brings her arms in, she spins much, 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 much faster. That's because spinning, she has angular momentum. And angular momentum is a conserved quantity. Okay, it depends on velocity and distance from fixed point. So in other words, the figure skaters, it depends on mass, velocity, and distance from fixed point. The mass doesn't change. Her mass does not change between these two pictures. Now, because the mass times the velocity times, we usually say the radius, say the radius, the distance from a fixed point, the radius. Okay, the, the mass times the velocity times the radius has to equal a constant number. So if any one of those goes down, the other one has to go up. Another one has to go up. So the mass doesn't change. Now, when she brings in her arms, she's reducing the radius. She's reducing the distance from a fixed point, okay? She's making herself smaller, reducing her radius. Well, if the radius goes down, and the mass stays the same, but the, but the angular momentum has to stay constant, that means the velocity has to go up. So the same thing is with a shrinking cloud. As it shrinks, the radius gets smaller, that means it's going to spin faster, because there's not going to be much in the way of change of its mass. Okay, angular momentum is a conserved quantity. That means that it, is, it stays constant. And then down here, I, this is a slide in, in, um, in progress. Okay, I'm working on this one. This is as far as I got, and it got kind of late, and I got kind of tired. But anyway, so if you, if you get, download this, I'm going to start uploading the video tonight. I'm not going to do anything else on the Internet. And then tomorrow, this actually isn't very, very long, but tomorrow... Um, I'll send you out. Well, actually, actually, by the time you see this, you already get the email from me, so I don't even know why I say that. Um, but, okay, but just as a reminder, this is a work in progress. So what you want to do is, when I send out the, the next video after this one, you want to go back and get the rest of the PowerPoint slide if that's helpful, helpful for you, okay? So let me say goodnight, and I'll start uploading this.